Welcome, welcome, welcome to the veritable edge of Western civilization yet again. I am your host, David Alexander English. Today is May 12th or 13th. I guess it's 13th, uh, 2015. And this is uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, uh, Mercury Day, day of communication, and integrity and communication, integrity, um, integrating our mental states. Uh, it's also, this is show number 183. So, it's, uh, it's been a beautiful day, a little breezy, not too cold. Although, about an hour and a half ago, I was thinking, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to pay today because I don't know if I'm going to do the show today because the, the wind was just a little too much for me. My least favorite cold, cold, windy thing. And then the wind died. Thank you. Thank you, wind. Taking a break. And uh, today's a gimme anyway. It was supposed to, uh, there was a forecast for drizzle today. But um, apparently that has been postponed until tomorrow and uh, possibly Friday um, so yeah it'll be lots of lots of uh, dry grass and plants will be happy to hear that as we have our little our drought scene going on <clears throat> so this is the painting we're working on here don't know if you can see what I'm doing in here because I'm, I'm painting yellow in a white space and so I don't know that how much that's going to show up, but it has to be done. This stuff looks like mustard. It's fluorescent yellow. So yes, I'm painting with mustard today. Yep. So what I've been doing, and I'm not out here on the beach, and even when I am out here on the beach, because the beach is a great place to, uh, to kind of watch the world go by, literally, and, um, and see how the things that I've been studying apply in the real world. Um, I've been studying for the past couple of years now nature of reality and the nature of the, the true nature of our existence here on the planet <laughs> that sound ridiculous um, ridiculable as, a, as the case may be it sounds ridiculable but I feel like you know that's the stuff that interests me and I'm just gonna go with it and uh, And so right now I'm engaged in this, um, publishing a book, which will have a um, roughly a good percentage of, of what it is that I've been been um, given to understand by the universe in this process over the past couple of years. Um, kind of funny because I, I, I actually have another book project going on at the same time that has been it's talking more about the the actual you know what has happened on the planet in terms of in, in that book is called natural history and um, so that one's working its 
its slowful way towards publication as well. But um, I've been been writing the Absolute Truth book for the past month. Actually, today is uh, day thirty-eight, and uh, I'm going to keep writing it until I publish. I'm going to keep pu um, posting it on a daily basis on my Facebook page um, until I publish the book. And um, so the good news is last night, um, the book is designed like, um, hey brother, the other two um, paint, um, books in the series, I can show those to you. I, Shown them before, but I'll show them to you now. This is the first book in the series. Well, where are you? Uh, uh, it's got to be a way to show. There we go. Okay. It's called, you know, The Care and Feeding of the Natural High uh, Divine Metaphysics 101, the short course illustrated handbook of the infinite immortal children of the light. And um, this is a picture. Of the place up in Big Sur, um, actually from the middle of the archaeological site that I discovered up there back in 1993-94, and the, if you open it up, you'll see that it's it's all these uh, original words on on original photography, right? Notice that, it, that the photographs go all the way to the edge of the page. That's called a bleed, a full bleed. So I published that in. Uh, I think 2008, and then in 2010, um, I was inspired to publish this book. And uh, I, if you've been watching the show, you you've probably seen that I um, uh, I talked about the the story behind this book. Uh, this, the idea for this came to me in a hot spring um, when I was literally sitting in a hot spring. Uh, I'll, I'll do a flip through that too. See, it's all it's words on original words on original photographs, and uh, yeah, that's where it goes. Oh, that's a nice page. I like that page. It's a good page. Um, so the idea was. The idea for that, that book came to me on a, on in this hot spring. A minute after getting into the hot spring, I, I put my head under the water and and the words for the title came to me. And I was like, whoa, what is that? And I I wasn't thinking I was going to do a book or something. It just came to me and I said, that's the title of a book. And then I was like, well, what, what would be in that book? And, and that... Then the rest of my time in that hot spring that day was all about that, what was in that book. And um, I said to a friend the next day that if I had a place to plug in my computer, I, I, could pub I could write and publish that book in three weeks. And the very next morning, I got a message from a friend saying, uh, my friend Kat down in the OC, that, that um, she had rented a place in... Uh, Belbo Island, and, and her plans had changed for her and her daughter for the summer, and but the rent was paid, and that I was welcome to to uh, take it over. And so I moved in that day, and three weeks later, the book was on Amazon. Now, the idea was that that I would design each page as if it was a standalone poster. And um, so each page in that book is designed so that it can, you know, if I blew it up to poster size, you know, you could stick it on the wall and it would, it would make sense. And, um, and thus you could, you could start that book anywhere in it. And the, the first book is the same way, except for the last 30 pages of the first book, um, The Care and Feeding the Natural High, because that book, it, it, um, uh, the last 30 pages tells the story of um, 1999, how I went around, essentially went around the world to be at the pyramids for the millennium. 
and um, and that telling that story is what inspired me to be able to uh, to write my autobiography that year. Um, what was that? 2000, 2008. So, um, but in the middle of those three weeks of doing the second book, um, Divine Metaphysics 102, I got this, uh, I actually saw, had a vision <laughs> of the next book in the series. And I saw the title was going to be Absolute Truth. And, um, But you know, at the time, I was, I was, uh, I was like, oh man, that's a lot of work. And for another time, thank goodness, because I was just hoping to, to get it done before I had to go that summer, and I did, and it all worked out. But um, a couple of times over the past couple of years, I I would have like a burst of ideas, and I would make notes of them in my in my phone. And uh, in my iPhones, and they always, you know, whenever you upgrade your iPhone, it 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 transposed, you know, the notes transposed to the next iPhone. So I have the notes going back to uh, 2009 for that phone, and um, I mean on my phone, and um, so I had uh, you know, those bursts of ideas for the Absolute Truth book. Came to me um, when they came to me. I would, I you know, made the notes, and so I've included those notes into the uh, into the manuscript. And um, what's happening is uh, last night. Okay, so there's there's two things happening here. Okay. So you see how thin these yeah, books are. Like one of those, so see how they're they're both. They're both about a hundred pages, and the reason is is because they're you know they're full color, full color, full bleed photographs. So. In self-publishing, these books. I used uh, uh, CreateSpace and Lulu.com. Now, CreateSpace is Amazon's publishing on demand site. <coughs> and um, and in so doing, you know, it, to do a full bleed and keep the book, you know, cost effective for people to buy. Um, you know, it, it cost me about ten dollars. You know, between eight and ten dollars to to make um, to get a copy made, and so then I can sell them for twenty dollars, right, and make roughly ten dollars on the deal. And um, but if it's you know if if the if the page count is like you know one hundred and fifty pages or, or more, it just that model doesn't work, you know. Um, the book becomes too expensive for people to to be able or willing to to buy, and um, so so. As far as hard copies go, as far as e-books, e you know, you can have it be as many pages as you want. It's cool, but um, so I, I hit upon a solution. <laughs> and uh, the solution is this: it's a crazy solution. I know. Call me insane, but. Call me whatever you want, but don't call me late for dinner, as they say. But I'm um, The solution is
make three books. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, right? Great. Make three books. Are you crazy? Yes. So here's how that works. One book is just text. Now, my autobiography, this book, it's a 340 pages, and that's uh, 8 by 10. You can also do it in 11, 8 and a half by 11. That book costs, because it's just text, there's no color in it. That book costs me, it costs me roughly $5 to make and uh, or to buy from you know Amazon um, going for a second loop so you see, text, you know, textbooks, they don't cost, you know, tech, I mean, books with just text, they don't cost that as much to make, you know. Um, so, right now, uh, I'm projecting that, that just the text, in like 10 point print is going to be the text version is probably going to be about in excess of 150 pages maybe between 150 and 200 pages it could be right now i want to i want to take passages that i'm that i'm writing and i want to give them space right and i want to present them um, so that they're you know visually stimulating as well as just not a whole lot of text you know and um, page once again in 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 alignment with this the the general design of the series each page is is a standalone poster right little wisdom posters then um, and in so doing to, I mean to do that um, I have to make two books you know book one and book two of the absolute truth project um, you know where there are words on photographs, original words on original photographs. So there's a text. There'll be a text version that's just uh, you know between 150 to 200 pages, and there'll be there'll be the uh, the same text and everything, but on original photographs. And there'll be two books of that at you know the six by nine format that you saw there. And so last night, I started the process, actually did the title page, the illustrated version of Absolute Truth, and uh, I forgot how much fun it is <laughs> to finally you know, it's one thing to plan stuff out. It's another thing when you can actually, you know, get a concrete thing that says it's a, it's exactly how you designed it. You know, and it and it looks even better than you what you thought. You know, and and uh, so I laid out the first and the fourth page last night, and. Uh, so tomorrow, when it's supposed to be raining and everything, and, and end of Friday, when it's probably raining and windy, I'll be hopefully spending the day, barring the unforeseen actions of the world and whatnot, I'll hopefully be laying out more pages and whatnot. It's just, it's so, I don't know, it, it, it just warms my Virgo heart. <laughs> you know? And the good thing about it is, one, it's done, you know? And, uh, yeah, so, anyway, so there's the, there's the practical stuff that's going on in my universe, um, but then there's the, what is this book about? There's the learning of all this, all this stuff, and the realizing all this stuff, and coming all this stuff, and, 
And, um, you know, as I, as I, uh, one of the things I've been doing is I've been reviewing things like um, resor different resources that I've studied over the years. Looking really cool. It looks like there's another sundog happening right there. Crazy. Um, And um, so one of the resources I, I highly recommend people check out, if you, when you're ready to know, get an idea of, of, of what the world and how the universe and the great beyond and all that is kind of structured, there's certain things that I, I'd recommend checking out. And one of those is, is uh, Seth Speaks. And, you know, you can, you can study it with his... Big a grain of salt as you wish, you know, like, like, uh, like anything else. Um, and uh, it's there's a uh, hey, there's a uh, there are are um, audiobook versions of it you can listen to on uh, on YouTube for free. And uh, I've been listening and really been kicking up a lot of psychic dust and uh, and confirming some of the the other things that I've I've you know that have come to me just between me and the universe you know and and some of and confirming some of the other sources that I've been studying like you know that uh, Luis Monero's book uh, demystifying the out-of-body experience I was actually looking at some of that today before I came out on the boardwalk refreshing the chapters five, six, and seven in that book are really, uh, you get a, you get some serious um, uh, information about people that have been been traveling in the astral and journeying in the astral for over the past sixty years. You know, because that's what uh, he he does. He is he works with um, this outfit called the. Consciousness Academy, which is a, a school um, with you know several locations all around the world, that um, that essentially teach people how to astral project mission, and um, so they have records of people's astral journeys going back sixty years that they can draw on, and uh, so it's. It's really valuable, a valuable resource to, you know, if you have any kind of questions about like how to or what you encounter or all that kind of stuff. And I'm all stuff right now for some reason. It's just I can't get enough of it. And so I'm, I'm just indulging the bejeebers out of it because it feels like what I'm supposed to be doing right now in the most, uh, it feels like I'm, I'm supposed to be um, this is part of, has everything to do with why I chose to come into this lifetime. And, um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's definitely activation time for David. And the more, the more I do this sort of stuff, the more I look into these things, the more I, I feel, uh, at peace, you know. And uh, can bring that peace to to situations that I encounter out here, and, and share that peace with other people, um, and put it into the work. You know, it leaves me open for inspiration, and uh, and then you know when when weird things happen, I know that it's you know it's not something that's just happening to me, um, but it's all part of what's what. Um, uh, you know, it's not, not a punishment or something, you know, because the universe doesn't punish people, much to our chagrin, you know, we're the only ones that punish people. And uh, no matter all the, all the uh, you know, people that have done the most horrendous things on this planet, you know, they don't get punished. They, 
they punish themselves, obviously, by doing things, treating people less than um, what people deserve to be treated like. But, but the universe knows harm, and that we ultimately, as infinite immortal children of light, we can't, we can do no harm, you know. And uh, and that that even those beliefs will they'll be tested, you know. And, uh, Okay, here we go. Next iteration. Let's see. Get to make these bigger. Brown here. Speed this process up. Tad, a scooch. <laughs> I love that one. Scooch. So it's at this point, one of the things that I've been coming to understand is. Like with the book I just described, Absolute Truth, which I, I realize is a pretty audacious, audacious title, but um, no buts. That's just what has to happen. Um, Um, so, so to get bogged down in my new tie of this, but once again, we need to think bigger. Bigger. Go big and go home. We'll go big and go home. I mean, like, like, you know, everything. We got 2119. Ooh, battery's draining pretty quick. Huh. I guess it's charging the phone, that's why. So, this is going to be a shorter show. Uh, we'll go for another 10%. Probably doing. Which is fine. I think I'm the only one. No, there's somebody else down there. There's somebody half blocked that way. This <laughs> So today, this this young woman came up from Vietnam, American, but she, you know, was born in Vietnam, and um, she's a what do you call it a pharmacist. But she she actually was uh, grew up in, uh, in Culver City here. And um, we we're talking about uh, global warming. And uh, some of my research 
you know, I, I, I basically I, I said to her, you know, I've been studying the the climate of the planet for about the past, you know, years, and um, it looks like, you know, it's not unusual for the planet to uh, to um, go without to be without glaciers and in fact you know the, the, I think the planet has probably been without glaciers more than it, it's been with glaciers and what most people don't realize is that we're actually in a glacial period right now in that there's glaciers you know there's a giant glacier on the on each of the poles right now and um, and so people are kind of wigging out about the fact that the planet's warming up and that the glaciers are are melting and um, and that humanity is is a is a major factor our our you know our um, behavior especially over the past hundred years has accelerated the process, but what most people don't realize is that there was a warming trend that's been going on for the past 12,000 years before the present. And um, because we, up until 12,000 years ago, we were at a, we were in a, um, a glacial period, an ice age, and uh, we're now in what you know climatologists would call an interglacial period, expecting that there will be another flip back. And we've been in this this quote unquote ice age glacial period, greater glacial period for over a hundred thousand years. And in that the the glaciers um, they extended as far south from the poles and, and north from the poles. Uh, towards the equator as they um, as they ever have um, when uh, about 22,000 years ago and at, at that point they had, they had already started to recede and it's just that they that that you know receding accelerated tremendously um, over the the past uh, 12,000 years to the point where we, here we are now where we you know most of the planet is doesn't have glaciers on it um, I think the, the real key if there's a benefit in the whole global warming trip, it's that um, humanity is coming to a, a point of uh, species maturity in the sense of, of um, you know, beginning to take responsibility for its actions on the planet. And uh, out of necessity, because in order for the planet to continue in a way that that is, um, you know, conducive to humanity's needs, humanity has to act more responsibly about how it conducts itself. And um, and that's not a bad thing. That's a very good thing, you know. Um, yeah, yes. So can you see? You still can't see that. Wah. It just looks like a big, well, won't, probably won't be able to see it till I get out here. Let's Looks pretty cool, though. We got. We're already at nine percent. Jesus. Yeah, I gotta. Should probably end it here so that. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll call that that it. You do my turning around thing. Oh. Well, it was fun. I'm glad I got to do a show today. And uh, thanks for watching. 
And um, I was going to say earlier, you know, one of the oh, cops, cops out of the car. Welcome to Venice. Pelicans. Um, yeah, so anyway, what I was going to say is uh, one of the things that I've been, been realizing is that um, if you're watching this, you're weird. <laughs> and weird is an old English, old German word, which means uh, um, the root of it is beard, the three beard sisters, the, the three norns, the three graces, the Virgin Mother Crone, the triple goddess. It means that... that the, that I can see the hand of divinity um, in a given situation. And uh, so we still use weird the same way, because we, we, we can see the coincident of, of, of things manifesting that, that shouldn't, you know, if, if, if the universe isn't divine, certain things shouldn't happen. <laughs> but... The, the coincidences are too obvious that, that you know that somebody's making stuff happen. Somebody, somebody's making things happen. Yes, yes. So, anyway, um, thanks for being weird. Thanks for watching, and uh, I look forward to our next show, which is all dependent on the weather. <laughs> so, let's put that down there. Remember, we love you.